That will be your last stupid mistake. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, I am immediately speechless. This is a video that was released yesterday by the official Diablo YouTube channel called Adventure with a Dev. The clear intentions of this video is to show some developers playing the game, see what they can do within it, and have them just talk about the creation process a little bit, right? It sounds quaint, it's hard to fault as a theory, and it's just a nice bit of easy content for them to release that shouldn't cause any complaints from the community, right? Too bad that they somehow found a way to mess it up royally, and they did this with their choice of setting, and of course, honestly, their choice of devs. There's no easy way to put this. The two developers that they chose to put in this are not good at Diablo 4, nowhere close to it, and there is nothing wrong with someone playing video games and not being good at them. I really do want to be clear on that. You're allowed to be bad, as long as you're having fun. However, this is not two people just sitting down to play a video game for fun. It's an advertising decision for Diablo 4, a marketing choice, a game in which one of the most vocal complaints that I've heard from the community up to this point is, have the devs even played the game? It feels like the end game had no playtesting in the slightest. And then they give us developers playing the game, and well, before we even dive into the video itself, let's analyze the situation. The Barbarian player on the left is a senior dungeon designer for the game, having a notable hand in the majority of the dungeons that are in the game as a result. The one on the right is the Rogue, who is an associate designer, from the sound of it, mostly working on artwork and assets for the actual physical creation of a dungeon. Together, they are playing a dungeon on World Tier 1. Yep. World Tier 1, at level 50 on both characters. Right off the bat, that sets expectations a bit low. A level 50 character can easily take on World Tier 3, so putting it on World Tier 1, hey, you're just making it look simple. But hey, it should at least make it look all right as far as the gameplay background, right? It shouldn't cause them any issues. Well, what if I told you the Barbarian at least is using zero shouts in their build, they have Hammer of the Ancients on their bar with no buffs for it in the slightest, and even then, they aren't using it. If you watch their gameplay, it's 95% Lunging Strike, a basic skill, and 5% Leap, as they clearly have the Leap Earthquake Legendary, so that's cool, but they still have other buttons that they could press, and they just aren't using them very often. It's like you handed someone who had never played the game a controller for the first time, and this is what they got. They're even spamming the basic skill button to make it happen repeatedly. They're tapping it, tapping it over and over, and for someone who is supposed to theoretically have hundreds of hours playing the game, to understand the game, that's it's just a joke. You can hold down buttons for basic and core skills. The fact you didn't know that means that you never really worked that out yourself, but more importantly, it means that when working on this game with other people, none of them told you that either, and that's just nuts. If you're someone who just plays the game for a couple hours a day, sure, not knowing that, yeah, you know, it's a surprise, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice surprise at least, it's something you'd be happy to know. But to hear that one of the developers, one of the dungeon designers doesn't know something, it's just, it's too much. And it'll probably come up again later, but I do have to mention this early on. The senior dungeon designer dies at level 50 on World Tier 1. You may be saying, oh, maybe it's some bullshit thing in the game like chain freeze crowd control or something like that, right? Well, they use a potion at 4 minutes and 53 seconds into the dungeon run, then they just run around whacking stuff ineffectively, slowly losing health, still not using a potion, then at one point they get feared, so proper crowd control, they run away, they're still losing tons of health, the fear ends, and they still don't use a potion, and then a few seconds later they get frozen by an elite, and then they die during that at 519 in the clip. So if you wanted to, sure, you could say that they died to a bullshit freeze mechanic, which isn't necessarily incorrect as to the end result, but let's be real, this death was caused by not pressing the potion button for 26 seconds straight of combat in which they were losing health, being crowd controlled multiple times, not locked in some sort of animation, there was plenty of opportunities to use it, and again, this is just, it's all on top of the complete lack of awareness with which skills are being used when, and I'm, I'm just, I'm starting to feel like I'm just bashing this person, but again, it's not about them in particular. I'm not upset that they are bad at the game, not in the slightest. What I'm annoyed at is the decision of the marketing team to, at this point, choose two developers who don't know how to play the game well, and aren't showing us content even above World Tier 1 when they play the game. We need to see some devs kill a Tier 100 Nightmare Dungeon, you know what I mean? And then, when it is World Tier 1, and they are level 50, and then they die in such an avoidable way anyways, it's, it's just really not a good look for the game right at this moment. Like, this video doesn't even need to have them actually playing Diablo 4 within it. They could just be sitting there and chatting and it would have had way less backlash than it does now. I just mean, how does this get past every stage of production with everyone thinking, yeah, this is a good idea, we should definitely post this, everyone will enjoy it, nothing negative will happen to anyone involved, and nobody will be insulting our lovely developers that we chose to put in the spotlight for no particular reason. Okay, 
I've just been complaining about the most general things so far, but they're things that are worth bringing up in the current climate of the community sentiment of the game, for sure. So let's dive into what is actually happening in the video, if they actually say anything relevant while playing any information that actually is good to know. They start off just talking about the design of the dungeon from a visual perspective. Hey, this is nice, cool looking place, right? Then the neat factoid that this is actually the only dungeon in the game with a proper drowned aesthetic specifically, to me that immediately raises a red flag, right? Because that means they made too many non-drowned dungeons. I, I mean, come on. You have to be thinking about variety at least to some extent to make sure that not all your dungeons look the same, and surely something calls out to you to say that's not quite right if you realize there's only one of one of these types. Anyways, they talk about the process of designing the dungeons and how they have the themes for different monster families in different areas that lets them apply textures easily once they've decided on the visual theme of the area itself, so that you'll notice a bit of consistency between different dungeons depending on what the main enemies are or what the technical story of the dungeon is. Then something comes up about a standing meeting they had during production. If one of the dungeon designers said that they they've completed something, the entire team will organize a playtest of it together so they can give feedback. Good stuff, bad stuff, alternate ideas, stuff like that. And then after a bit, the dungeon would be sent to another team member, and that way there are multiple people working on each dungeon to be sure to be able to cover each other, have ideas the other person might not have, seen things differently in interesting ways, maybe fix mistakes, and that's good as a theory, you know? But it seems to me that, from the conversation here, these meetings and the feedback that were given in them was mostly about the visuals of a dungeon, the aesthetic the immersion, so to say, not so much about things like density, which finally feels pretty decent after patch 1.1.1, but clearly this is something that should have been caught while playtesting the game, not to mention the layout of a bunch of the dungeons being very, sort of, back and forth. Then the idea is brought up about the dungeon objectives, and how in actuality, a lot of the time a dungeon story theme was sort of held above all else as the item of importance when creating the dungeon. Objectives would be decided from the theme and or name of the dungeon, as well as the location of it on the map, and then the dungeon itself would then be created around the concept of those objectives. Well, I I can understand this as a reasonable choice as a theory, it is immediately met with a problem that is brought up by the senior dungeon designer themselves, which is in Belfry's Akara, there are objectives that are massive drowned bells you have to destroy. The thing is, they're massive bells, which means that they need massive rooms to be inside of, which means they need space on the dungeon map for those rooms to exist. And more often than not, multiple big rooms needing to exist means pacing issues in a dungeon. It means long hallways to make things fit, and it often leads to a lot of backtracking, which they acknowledge here in the video is one of the worst things that they can make a player do, and they obviously don't want that. And this here leads me to a big issue I've come to realize with the creation process of Diablo 4, but it's even easier to break down after the next topic that is conversed within the video itself. The senior dungeon designer says that they think themselves to be average at video games, and how the dungeon team is very diverse in that manner, with some of them being more hardcore gamers, some of them being more casual, some in the middle, some enjoying certain genres of game, some enjoying other genres of game, and all trying to come together to make something perfectly in the middle of all of it. The specific quote being, make sure that everyone has a good time regardless of what their gaming preferences are. And the second that sentence was uttered, something clicked for me in my brain. That is what Diablo 4 is. It has such a beautiful core to its center that could be something great, and they are listening to the community to change a bunch of things around that core to hopefully actually fix the game, maybe in a few months, or let's be honest, a year or two, but th this philosophy shows what was going on before we as players got our hands on the game, and what their focus was as developers. It wasn't creating an ARPG that is amazing and the best Diablo game that they possibly could, it was creating a game branded as Diablo with a Diablo story that makes everyone have a good time regardless of their gaming preferences, and that is a catch-all situation. They wanted the game to be fun for casual players and for hardcore players, and the end result has been casual players complaining that the game is too deep, they'll never get to the end, and hardcore players complaining that the end game was never tested, it's too shallow, there's nothing to do, and that compared with the sentiment in this sort of interviewee gameplay segment made me realize something. The game was built to live and die on that level 30 to 60 range, that experience. Level 1 to 30, you're still finding your footing, you have barely any skills, you don't know how to play, still working it out, but the story's nice and the areas look cool too. 30 to 60, you start properly unlocking your potential, getting some real synergies going, getting some more legendaries, and then eventually making a build at 50+, plus, starting to engage with the Paragon points, all of that. Then from the moment that you unlock World Tier 4, whenever you do that, it's just sort of like, oh, wait a second, nothing changes from here forwards? World Tier 4 isn't actually really different from World Tier 3, aside from some numbers? Well, that sort of really sucks. And then we keep playing because we have a strange addiction to the loop of all of this. It's the same reason that Altars of Lilith exist in the game and give player power bonuses. They want to make the casual dungeon grinders happy, who don't really care about the relatively minor difference that getting all the altars would give them. But they also want to make the collectible hunters happy and give them something scattered around the map that has genuine rewards for completing. 
And again, the people that are most screwed over there by this are the more hardcore players for the game. The ones who view any player power as being mandatory. You have to get it because it'd be crazy not to, but also have no interest in spending a ton of their time riding around the map looking for alters because they just don't consider it fun. It's just such a joke that this video exists at this specific point in time. I, I don't know what else to say. I feel like the two developers in the video, if they saw what I'm doing right now, would feel like I'm bullying them. But this really genuinely, it's not about them. And I want to make that as clear as possible. Being average at video games, as you say you are, isn't a bad thing. It's perfectly fine. And under different circumstances, dying like that in a dungeon on World Tier 1 would be funny in a good way. We'd all laugh together. But the context really matters. And right now, the context is that most of the community is questioning if the developers really know how to play the game that they created. And this video was just such not the right choice to try and prove that wrong. As simple as that. There's not much else to say at this point. Clearly, I'm, I'm far from the only person who feels this way. I mean, look at that like to dislike ratio one more time. It says everything it needs to. This video was a mistake for them to put out. We didn't learn anything positive. It just puts perspective on some of the negatives and tells us where they came from. It just, it feels like someone in the marketing department is laughing at the players right now, doing their best to just rile us up as much as possible. And well, if that's the case, it's working. I really hope things fix in this game sooner rather than later. I hope we get some videos that show us devs not only know how to play the game to a high level, but also actually understand the mechanics at play within it. Because until then, this concept of the elusive Diablo 4 developer that knows how to play the game is limited to only one person in my personal opinion, which is Adam Jackson from the Campfire Chat a couple of weeks ago, who showed that he really understands the game's mechanics. That's it then. I hope you enjoyed this in, in some way. Let me know down in the comments what you think about all this too, because it, it's just sort of crazy. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye